<laughs> oh, it's just so beautiful. <laughs> it's just so beautiful. With a toothless dog and a toothless dragon. Oh, my oh needed that. Okay. You want to get out of here? Let's go. I wish dragons were real. It'd be so cool to ride one. Like, I don't know. <sighs> the fuck is that? Oh my gosh. I, I was asleep, and this is just, is nothing, it's, it's okay. I want a divorce. Yeah. It's Patrick Beatty Reviews, the number one for news. It's Patrick Beatty Reviews, number one for news, yeah. Tune in, get up. Yeah, what's up? Keep the change, you filthy animal. What is up everybody? Hope you're having a good day. Time to talk about How to Train Your Dragon 3. This is the final chapter in the How to Train Your Dragon trilogy and I've been waiting for this film since 2014 when the second film came out and I was just floored by how much I enjoyed that movie. I hadn't even seen the first film. I walked into it to start my review and I, I just didn't know what to expect with the second one, especially going into it not knowing anything about the first and by g I just... I, I wept openly. The franchise does an excellent job of showing Toothless and Hiccup, and they continue that with How to Train Your Dragon 3. This is a centered story on Hiccup and Toothless's relationship and where they're going the older that they get. Not to spoil the second film, but at this point it's been five years, so hopefully you guys have seen this. In each of the subsequent How to Train Your Dragon films, both Hiccup and Toothless kind of are hitting the same levels of leadership, of ability, of responsibility that each other has. And, and like, they lose the same, they gain the same, and there's a really good team building between the two. But in this new film, Toothless meets a new Night Fury, a Bright Fury as they call it, and we discover that Toothless wants more than just being with Hiccup and helping him out and doing things that help Hiccup, Hiccup doing things that's helping Toothless. It's the natural progression that I think the franchise was going originally, and I had a really great time watching this movie. Also, we have a new villain that's out to kill Toothless, is out poaching him, doesn't really pose a real threat to Hiccup, in fact, doesn't want much to do with Hiccup, only wants to hunt his dragon. The film in itself is gorgeous. There are parts where they go down into the hidden world where there's all of these new dragons. The world looks so brightly lit and vibrant and just and just beautiful. I wanted to live in the hidden world for forever. The film has great quality animation. It's top notch. I loved everything about the animation, the style, the cinematography even. The writers and directors get really brave in making a lot of the story centered on Toothless as well, where you've got a lot of visual storytelling and not a lot of dialogue for a lot of the moments. And those were some moments that I absolutely loved. Any of the interactions with Toothless and the new Bright Fury were amazing. I love that relationship. As far as Hiccup's character goes, he's trying to learn to be more than just relying on him with a dragon. The dragon isn't what defines him. I think they do a pretty good job. Again, the voice acting is top notch and it's really amazing to see after five years they make such a good film that completes a trilogy so well. I just wish it didn't take five years for it to come out. That's kind of the flaw with this film is some of the things just feel like it's riding on the coattails of the first and second film. There's some open-ended stuff that happened in the second film that they don't even really address in the third. And again, the villain really, he's not after Hiccup, so there's not a lot of risk when it comes to Hiccup and what Hiccup is trying to do with his life. Much more about Toothless and where he's going. So you could say the main character in this is a split between Hiccup and Toothless, but I don't think it could be any other way because you've got to conclude both of those characters' story arcs. The last bit of this movie is perfect. 
absolutely perfect. It's just the getting there that kind of reminded me of the Lego movie too, where they were writing a little bit more on the coattails of their previous films. We're not really delving in and taking the risks that I saw them make in the first and second film. This one really more is a return to basics. That doesn't at all make it a bad film. But of the three films, I think this is probably the lowest, but it's of this, this little of a margin. I had a blast watching this film. Definitely go and check it out, and you're gonna go and want to check it out in theaters, full price. Go see it now. So guys, tell me what you thought of How to Train Your Dragon whatever you thought leave a comment down below again thank you so much as always for watching and i will see you at the next review